All right, we get set now. We've got all kinds of high drama. You could say that was an upset. Kennedy Contendi coming here. You had to think that their horse for the Matadors was Shavla Shabransky. He winds up losing, so we're all even. So let's get us ready for the middleweights. And as soon as Rick Schwartz is ready, he's ready. Let's go to Rick Schwartz. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are all tied up. One bout apiece. So, time for number three, the middleweight fight. And now, representing Mexico City, please welcome from Espiritu Santo, Brazil, Yamaguchi Florentino. This is a very stylish Brazilian and fun to watch a showman. We think a future star, Yamaguchi Florentino, unbeaten in the World Series of Boxing, but all his bouts have been in Mexico City. I'll tell you what, though, he's got speed, he's got power, he's got intelligence in the ring. He looks at his opponent, he figures him out. He's a style reader. Ranked number six overall in the WSB, so he's a tough customer. Back to Rick Schwartz. Thank you, Thank you Alan Massengale. Now, your Los Angeles Matador. From Dayton, Ohio, he is Chris Sweet Pea Pearson. This guy's got a lot of pressure on him, Sean O'Grady, because he's been out one time. I was really impressed with him. He knocked out Chris Jones of Memphis with impressive power. He's a very confident fighter, but he's got pressure because his team is tied up right now here at home. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're in boxing and you're Nick Sweet Tea, you've got to be tough. He's a, he's a stylish boxer. He got into boxing at seven years old. He, he got into boxing because it was going to help his basketball. He wanted to be able to pick up some, some more maneuvers and get in condition for his basketball, but he fell in love with boxing, and here he is right in the World Series of Boxing. Okay, middleweights coming up right now. Chris Pearson of the LA Matadors and Yamaguchi Florentino. Let's go to the ring announcer for, the, for his announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, in the Azul corner, 23 years of age, weighing in at 160 pounds, 160.4 to be exact. His WSB record is four wins and only one loss. Currently number three in the WSB League Middleweight Division. From Espiritu Santo, Brazil, please welcome Yamaguchi Florentino. And in the red right corner, fresh up winning his opening fight debut in the WSB two weeks ago here at the Avalon. Weighing in at 100 and 60.6. His WSB record, 1-0, looking for number two. Representing the great state of Ohio, fighting out of Dayton, Ohio. They call him Sweepy. He is Chris Sweepy Pearson. <laughs> Referee tonight for the middleweight competition is David Dinkin. All right, gentlemen, I gave instructions and instructions. Watch your low blows. Go hit him behind the head and watch your head butts. Good luck to both of you. God bless. Touch them up. Here we go. And on a head to head, the couple of significant factors. The height is important. There's one inch height advantage. Pearson will be punching down with his punches. Florentino reaching up. But more importantly, look at the uh, experience. Yamaguchi's had five fights in the World Series of Boxing. Chris Pearson's only had one. But he's got a lot of stuff to prove, and he is very good in the ring. Round number one, schedule five. They come right out and meet right in the center of the ring and start throwing punches, wasting no time That's here in the right. middleweight division as we've seen before. I should mention I was incorrect of Florentino being undefeated. He did lose one fight to a very tough Ecuadorian Olympian, Carlos Gangora, 
and he was, it was a fight. They had a rough time, the whole team down there. They'd been fighting a lot of fights, and he seemed tired that fight and lost a close one to that one. But other than else, he's taken care of down in Mexico City. It is a combine here at the World Series of Boxing. You're on such Body a tough punch. schedule. Not just the fight, you're training every day. You're working out, you're sparring every day. Look at these two go right to work. Both southpaws, they go right to work. Now, south, uh, right-handers are more prevalent in the sport of boxing than left-handers. So it is confusing for anybody, including a left-hander. Little uppercut snuck in there by Yamaguchi Florentino. Oh, man. Another nice right shot. hand from Florentino. I tell you what, you yeah. got the action here all night long. These guys, these teams have worked their tails off all year to get to this point. They know what's at stake here. Either they go and look for a glory and go to the world championships, or they just, the whole season, all the work goes down the drain. So the intensity has been fierce throughout tonight. They've met in the center of the ring and gone at it the entire time. The Matadors, pressure. I think, are a little bit in shock right now that Shabransky lost that fight. So the pressure is right on Pearson right now. This is the swing fight of the night. It's 1-1 going into the middleweights with two to go. And it's anybody's guess what's going to happen with the bantamweights. That is for sure. And anybody's guess what's going to happen with our two heavyweights tonight because they're evenly matched. So this is a big swing fight. Oh! Oh, look at that. Good jab. Yamaguchi, follow that up. And there's a good he hook. Just, he did Pearson. follow, but he turned him around with it. Just some power, just some strength that you have, you, you have in the ring. It's showing that. Pearson got hurt. He's hurt. I'm oh. telling you, he's hurt from that punch. He's very hurt. Oh, down to the canvas he goes. The rule is a slip. David Dink is calling it a slip. Yeah. Telling you right wobbly. now. You're right. You're wobbly. He's wobbly. He got wobbly with that big punch. Yamaguchi didn't follow up on it, but he has gotten hurt here. He's got to clear his head right now. He's against a tough Brazilian, Yamaguchi, who's 4-1 this year in the World Series of Boxing. His first time outside of Mexico City. Pearson now putting his punches together. You can see he's clearing his eyes in there and clearing his nose a little bit. And holding his hands up right around his face is Pearson. He is well-schooled. Look, you hold your hands up there. Get your protection, especially now. You need some time to get over that barrage that you got hit with earlier in this round. A hard lead right jab. We didn't see a lot of it from Yamaguchi early in the season, but he's really developed that as all these fighters have improved. Look at the accuracy of the punches of Yamaguchi compared to Pearson's. Yamaguchi's right on target, the efficacy of a skilled marksman. Put your punches right on your opponent's face. You gotta watch your heads, watch those heads. Referee sees it. 14 seconds left in round number one of the fast paced round right here at the Avalon in Hollywood. Huge. And Pearson got on the worst end of that one. He's gonna have to find a way against a very skilled Brazilian in there in the middleweight division. Wow. No handshaking in this fight either. Get with it and get busy. Both of them started, went right to their opponent and started punching. Yamaguchi, I think a terrific first round. You get out there and you land on your opponent, he goes right to work. That's there was one a huge right hand right there that turned, turned him around. It turned him around. And he, he came back, he got hit right there and that wobbled him. Pearson didn't look the same for, for about 30, 45 seconds after that match. They ruled that as a, as a slip. Their feet got tangled up. Down to the canvas goes Pearson. Oh, look at that cut. It's a, more of an abrasion. I don't think it's actually a cut. It looks to me like it's just a scrape. They did flash heads there, Sean. And that's what caused that. Pearson lost concentration there. That was an amateur move he made. He got hit, then he lost his concentration. And Yamaguchi wasn't going to let up. Well, I can tell you, when you get hit and you get hurt, you get kind of wobbly, you don't really realize that you're wobbly. Round number two, Yamaguchi Florentino in the green trunks taking on Chris Pearson of the Matadors in the black trunks. And we've, we've, we've watched Yamaguchi develop into a, a star down in Mexico City, actually. Oh, Slick yeah. fighter, he's, he's an entertaining fighter from Brazil, has a lot of fun in the ring, and he's putting the pressure on Pearson right now. I'm telling you what, Pearson's in for a lot of hurt. Oh, yeah. Look at this pressure. Also, remember that Yamaguchi's been training at 7,400 feet above sea level. Now he comes down to Los Angeles. He's got more energy, and he's going right to work. He should That's be in better shape. I like his ring gentlemanship right here because he's... Oh, look at, oh, look at him working, working, working the right hand. And mixing the attack. Hits to the head, goes well, well to the body. What is this, no pushing from Yamaguchi? Well, the referee says no pushing. You got to be careful of that. Yamaguchi trying to push him back, kind of Pearson on his heels. Pearson needs to go forward with his punches. Yamaguchi doesn't want that. Gold medals in a couple of Latin American tournaments in Puerto Rico and 
2010, started gaining world recognition to Florentino when he competed in the uh, AIBA World Championships, the International Boxing Federation World Championships in Milan, Italy in 2009. That's why he got drafted by Mexico City. Well, he's, he's been one of the biggest stars. David Dink is giving a lot of warnings in this match. Uppercut right there from Florentino. Keep Watch him get the board. Oh, There's shuffle. a showboating. <laughs> little Ali shuffle right there. He's feeling it. He'll do that. That's why he's become a star down in Mexico City. When I go and hang around with a team down there, a lot of people come up to him. A few groupies even. Yeah, real gregarious. He's easy to talk to and a little lighthearted. Always a smile on his face, except when he's in the ring here doing his boxing. You know, you got to turn it on and turn it off, and that's the way Yamaguchi's doing. He's feeling it. you gotta, you got to be mean and angry in the ring. you got to be focused. Well, they're throwing the whole time. Pearson's oh, getting caught with a lot of and different he's getting, stuff. He's getting tired. Look at the punches now from Pearson. Not quite as sharp as they were in last round. Trying to go to the body there. I'm impressed with the way that Florentino over the four months has fought his way into shape. You're right. You're right. He fought his way into shape, and he's learned. He's, he's a different fighter today than he was four months ago. And we knew that was going to happen. These kids all learn from one another and from their coaches. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now that, listen to me, says David Dinkins. Well, when you have this heavy action, all these barrages of punches, and a nice left hand from Pearson that was picked off by Florentino, you're going to get all kinds of ugly stuff. Head butts. There's a bloody nose right now for the fighter from Dayton. He's getting beaten up in there. Pearson needs to keep his mouth closed. Pearson that can't. Mouth. He, he may, may have a broken nose right now. He's got a broken nose. He's got to breathe through that mouth. Florentino's just beating him around the ring right now, Sean. Florentino. Well, Florentino is just so strong in this fight. Look at how much stronger he appears to be as Pearson. He is the one moving forward with his punches. Good balance from him. I mean, Yamaguchi looks like he can do it all. Even the Ali he'll mess, shuffle. He'll, he'll mess with your brain. That's yeah. what he's doing. Oh, yeah. Look at the hands down. A little showboating. You know, he's trying to get Pearson to come in and brawl with him. Stand still. Quit tying up. Quit holding. Doing some work on that cut. They got uh, those Q-tips are soaked in adrenaline chloride. One to 1,000. They put that in there to coagulate the cut. Then they put Vaseline. See the Vaseline on the hand of uh, Francisco Bonilla? Uh, on the left hand. They put that Vaseline over there to soothe, it, soothe the skin there. Oh, you've seen the best of Florentino tonight. Here we go, round number three in the middleweight division. It's been a tough go for the young David Pearson, 20 years old, out of Dayton, Ohio. Now, I will say this, you're seeing the best of Yamaguchi Florentino tonight. Yes, you are. Trying to win one for his team. You see how he's just so confident. He messes with you mentally with fancy footwork. That's not to say that Pearson can't come back and land a big punch, but Florentino's pretty much walked through everything he's seen. He's got the broad shoulders, and he's a tough fighter. And he's come through a lot to get here to Mexico City. He doesn't want to let his team down. Well, look at this from Pearson. Chris Pearson coming, coming back. back. He's coming got back a broken a nose. He's trying to breathe through his mouth, Sean. You can see the nose swelling yeah, up. To, what do you do when you have a broken nose? You breathe through your teeth. Clench your teeth because that's, that's a dangerous thing when you keep your mouth open breathing and, and you get hit on the jaw. Oh, like a punch like that right on, like the, there. right on the hinge. You have a hinge over there by underneath your ear, the mandible. That's what breaks. Get yeah. that jab working. Get that jab working, Chris. I like the way Chris is moving around to, to, to his left. To circle away from the power of your opponent. Most of the power for Yamaguchi is in that, that, that left hand, the straight left hand. Yeah, but when you have a broken nose, that left hand just got in. It is oh. really hard to ask a lot of a fighter because everything oh, yeah. hurts ten times worse. And that's, oh. You can see the nose swelling up right now. When you got a broken nose, even if you get hit on the hand, it hurts your nose. Yamaguchi Florentino putting on a clinic tonight for what he wants to do in the ring. Oh, this is, is who he good. is. Holds the hands down, holds the hands up, does the Ali shuffle. Very skillful. Look at the shoulders the on him. That's what I'm talking about. His shoulders working, so powerful. He's been working out so much, so diligently. Two training sessions a day, one in the morning, one in the evening, six days a week. These kids, they, they are really stepping up. Florentino is beating down Mr. Chris Pearson. Little rumble, Ohio. From, little rumble from Chris right there. I hope he's all right. Get that jab working if you're Chris. You got to get your composure back in the ring. Movement. Yamaguchi. Good right hand. 
Pearson. Yamaguchi. Here we are in the final minute of this round. Yamaguchi does a nice job of coming on, building to her crescendo for that final wow, minute. Wow, good right hand got in for Pearson right yeah, there. Nice he gave a little Chris. confidence there. Yeah, he, maybe he could find a way to come back, but you kind of look at his eyes, Sean, from where we sit. You can see a little bit of bewilderment, a little bit of confusion. The best face. This may be the best fighter he's ever faced. And under all this pressure for his team. Nice uppercut Good. right there. Chris still trying to show some things. You know, Chris maybe got his second win here. Looks like he did. Confidence. Here we go. Crowd loving it. Pulling for their matador with the blood flowing. This is what this sport is all about. All guts if you want glory. And Pearson's trying to find a way to dig down. Now he's got his speed back. He got caught on the right hand. Ten seconds left of this round. What a great round this has been. Pearson kind of turned it around the last minute or so. What a comeback. He needed this round, and he got it, I think. Huge round, and you know, building to a crescendo in that third round was Chris Pearson. Yamaguchi seemed to be winded that round. There's a little blood from that broken nose that we talked about. But in that early in that round, the third, it looked like Yamaguchi was coming on. But it was Pearson that came back. Listen up. Listen up, baby. To boxing, in and out, in and out. You got me, all right? Hey, he's a hey, 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 Round number four in what's been a blistering fast middleweight division. We got a broken nose on Chris Pearson for the Matadors. We got a slight cut they're working on for Yamaguchi Florentino. Something's got to give in there because of the way the action's been. Now, let's see, lefty versus lefty. Let's see if Pearson can put some combinations together and get back in this fight. He looked good last 30 seconds of that last round, Sean. And Try so to build on that. Yeah, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's trying to work his way through it. You know, he is learning too, as, as a fighter, he's learning a lot tonight, Chris Pearson is, because he hasn't been through the wars that Yamaguchi's been through. He, he got really tired, really tired in that second round and, and early in the third round. Sometimes you do that and then you get your second win and you're fine. And that's what's happening here. I just, Took one second because my eyes have been focusing inside the ring. Look around the ring tonight, and people's mouths are agape at the action they're seeing. They're like, wow, this is unbelievable the kind of fighting I'm seeing here in this full house. I mean, this is as good as it gets. Now, do you see how Yamaguchi looked like he was casually walking in and threw that left over the top? Tricky. That's what Tricky. he does, doubling up on the uppercuts, and then he just spurts. He fights and spurts like this, and Pearson's got to answer because he'll sneak up on you. Well, he slows you down to a pace slower than you usually go, and then he speeds up really quickly, he does. Yamaguchi Florentino on the right. He is so skilled. Looks shaking his head. No, he didn't yeah, hurt me. Yeah, he didn't hurt trying me. To, trying to blow the confidence of Chris Pearson. Pearson now putting on the pressure. Pearson feels it. He senses it. He thinks he may be behind in this fight, so he's putting on more pressure. Now look at the way uh, Yamaguchi, as Sean accurately Hostering. pointed out, good point, tries to control the pace. He Hostering. controls the paces. Yes. He kind of... Plays possum a little bit with you, a term the Southerners know about, but maybe not around the world. He just kind of lulls you to sleep a little bit while you're trying to come in, and then he hits you with that right hand like that, his lead right hand. I never played possum. That's when you play dead, you know. Oh, oh, oh. And people oh, sneak up on oh, you. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I just got to determine. Look at the face. Look at the face of Chris. He's just, he's just tough in there. You know what, I got a lot of respect for both of you these You know kids. what, Chris wow. has run out of gas though, Sean. He's out of gas again, but you know what, maybe he can get it back. How do you get it back when you're out of gas? Take as many deep breaths as you can. Try to rejuvenate yourself, revive yourself. I tell you what, Pearson's tough. It's the toughest fight probably of his life. Well, of course it is, and this is no man's Two land for him. You know, the fourth round. Two-time Golden Gloves champion. Very confident fighter, but boy, he's got a lesson tonight in what it's like to face a whirlwind. Now, Yamaguchi, as he goes along, one of his bad habits is holding those gloves down. There's a nice right hand that got in right there for Pearson. Wow. 
Look at Florentino having fun. Round number five here, final round, middleweight division. No one can let up at all off the accelerator because you don't know how the judges have it. I would think that Yamaguchi Florentino has outpointed Chris Pearson. But Pearson has acquitted himself quite well tonight by fighting through a broken nose. He knows he's got to step it up a notch here. He knew what going in tonight against Florentino is a guy who fights and spurts and can frustrate you. Florentino generally has been at his best tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, so it's just so much confidence in the ring, too, from Florentino. You know, and he, he, he's the bigger fighter. He looks like that weight in his upper shoulders. He, he just carries himself so well in the ring. Yamaguchi does. Uh, no knockdown, just a little bit of fatigue from uh, Chris Pearson. Yeah, Pearson's in, wading into deep water now. Really tough. This is really tough. Oh, they're going to take a point away from Yamaguchi. hitting behind the head. I didn't think that was warranted, really, because the guy fell down. He was punching, but that's a big point right there, Sean. Now he's got his attention. Now Yamaguchi, now he's hot. Would you have taken a point there? I don't know if I would, I, I, I don't think I would have, no. It was in the course no, of that, action. That, it wasn't intentional. That, that, that's a good fight. I, I, I would not have taken a point. Now Florentino but, is uh, a little bit mad. Yeah, and Florentino's really terrific, too, because he fights relaxed. He fights loose. Exactly. You know, he's not real tight with his punches. Not real, you're stiff like that. You can't throw hard punches. When you're loose and you're just throwing, throwing it loose punches as hard as you can, whoa. Look at that. Yeah. They're going to call that's that a knockdown. Yeah. They're going to get a standing eight. You know, at some point, you, ha you have to. I think the referee's right on that decision. Right? At some point, you have to step up and say, you know what? That's that was that was because, because of the punches he went that way as a standing eight. So that erased that other point, probably. Yeah, so in a 10-point must, you get, if it's a draw round. You oh, look at Yamaguchi. You know what? Florentino's looking to close his show. He's, He's so looking good. to close the show now. A lot of pressure from him. Oh my goodness, the best Florentino's ever looked, I'm telling you. And he's really developed over. This is a sixth fight in four months, five yeah. rounders. He would have never gotten this kind of experience and this kind of development as a regular amateur. Not at all. Here in the World Series of Boxing, he's met the world to him. And a lot of people around the world are ranking him in the top five amateurs in the world now. He is awesome. He's improved so much working under Francisco Bonilla, the terrific trainer from Mexico City. And he really understands, you know, the styles and fighters. Yamaguchi Florentino and how relaxed and how loose he is in the ring. Carries himself really well inside the ropes. 20 seconds, 16 seconds left of this fight. And I think Florentino, after that point taken away, took charge in this final round. Wow. They're trying to close the show. Pearson's been a very game fighter, but Florentino, they're going to throw all the way to the end here in the middleweight division. Pearson trying to come back. Time is out, though. Time is out. Wow. Blood from the mouth of Pearson. His nose is broken. What a terrific fight. He tried throughout this match. I'm sure he learned a lot tonight. Yamaguchi just gets better and better. You know, Chris Pearson has a lot to be proud of. You know, in this fight, he was hanging in there. He came back at times. The final round. An uppercut right knockdown right there. A weird angle. And look at the reaction of Florentino's yeah. face. Look at the angle of this punch. Boom. Now, right that's on that's the sneaking chin. one it's underneath. Snuck it underneath his armpit, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> and around his back. That's hard to How deal with. That? Yeah. That's hard to deal with. You got punches coming through your armpit, exactly. through your chin. That's how good Florentino right. is. We're waiting the decision. Let's get both of these guys. 
these fighters a round of applause. That was a battle. Was Excellent a point. point. That was a battle in the middleweight division. A very important we'll decision happens. coming up. Every fight tonight very important. The Matadors might have gotten a gift in that first fight with that decision after just a round and a few seconds. A big cut to award the decision to the Matadors, but then the Matadors suffered a big blow when they're undefeated. Light heavyweight, Shabransky lost, so that made us even coming into this one. Now this is a superstar, the Mexican team depended on Yamaguchi Florentino in this spot to probably get the victory against the less experienced fighter from Dayton, Ohio. Chris Pearson, who's got a swollen nose, and that's good sportsmanship right there. As we await the judges' decisions, and we'll get that shortly. What a night of action it's been here at the Avalon. John has made his way into the ring. I was wondering about, I was wondering about you have your interpreter here, Sean. I'm going to chase her over there. <laughs> your interpreter, I was just asking you a question. <laughs> yeah, it was a big moment here. These judges have to make sure they get this one right because this is where the, the night is going to turn on this decision. Can't emphasize enough. This is for, they're fighting for the team championships. All right, we got it now. Let's go to Rick Schwartz. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a split decision. Judge Tony Krebs scores the fight 48-45. Pearson. Judge James Jenkins scores the fight 48-45. Florentino. And Judge Vince Delgado scores the fight 47-46 for the winner from your Los Angeles Matadors, Chris Sweepy Pearson! Well, you know what? Florentino's upset. I think he's got good reason to be. I had it the uh, other way. I had Armaguchi Florentino winning by three rounds, but... Uh, that's the way it goes in boxing. I've seen some strange decisions. Some of the crowd is booing here. A lot of Mexico City supporters here in LA, but that is huge. <laughs> Yamaguchi's got to look. What can I do? Look on his face. Yeah, All right, let's go to Sean O'Grady. Here. Chris Pearson, congratulations. What a tough fight. Did you feel it was that hard? Yeah, it was a hard fight. You know, he got, uh, he got a lot of good experience. He's a great fighter. And uh, I just thank God I was able to pull out the victory. What won this fight for you tonight? Um, I'm guessing heart because we was both in there just sitting there trading. It wasn't a lot of skill, but you know, sometimes in boxing, it ain't about who got all the skills, it's about who won it. You gotta bite down. But, uh, you know, Chris, fighter. you showed me a lot about your character tonight. What's inside you, what's in your heart? Because I'll tell you what, back in that third round, uh -huh. you came out of it. You started off slowly in that third round, but then you came on really strong at the end. What were you thinking? I don't wanna lose, man. That's, that's it, I don't wanna take no L, so. I had to bite down, but like I said, he's a great fighter. He pushed me to my limit. That was a great fight and a great fighter that you beat tonight. Nice job from you. Chris Pearson gets a victory. The LA Matadors, how about that? What a match. Alan? Well, let's just sum it up how big that is. That's gonna put, and the crowd still, some of them booing that decision. Um, but you know, that's up to the judges. It's 2-1 Matadors in good position to get themselves to China for the World Championships. We'll be back here for more from L.A.